Or just, just swing the thing, swing the bag around your head. Ah, I'm gonna hit my head. This comes from Vance Weber. It says, great demonstration on how whirling motion above your head with the weight and the automatic response of the body. However, every time I've seen your video on this point, you always show it from down the line. Could you show it from a face-on view sometime? Easier to see the hip body movement from a perspective. Okay, so here we go. Vance, I got Margarita here. Pick that up. Okay. All right. Now, start swinging it around your head and push away. There you go. There you go. Keep doing it. There you go. All right, so that little move right there, right there. Okay, that's good. Don't wear yourself out. <laughs> there you go. You've got it from a face on view and she looks a lot better doing it than I do. The, the, the point behind this is all we're really trying to do, you can hang on that for a minute. All right, all you're trying to do is a golf swing, whether you're looking at it from this view or this view, we have this weight that's going around us. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to direct the momentum and whew, offset that weight. So my hips, to make it go forward, I mean, that right there is my golf swing. That's the first move I make out of the top. Now, most people, if they swing a weight around them like this, immediately, they're not thinking golf swing, so they're thinking stay on balance, and they've got all of this weight that's coming around that's gonna go out. And I'll just for the heck of it, I'll go from here again, just because it's important to see. So my hips, when I'm swinging that around, as it comes around, move back, back, back. So I'm pushing away from, and as I push away, it actually creates more momentum, which creates more speed, which creates more force, which hits the ball further. What a nice thing to have happen. Okay. This is from M. Solera, 77. It says, a lot of instructors, instructors now talk about laying the club down. Uh, all right, laying the club down on the downswing to get a shallow angle of attack. Does a lot of what you're describing counter that approach? Yes and no. We definitely want you to shallow out. Margarita, take your club for me. Grab one of yours. Here we go. Take your seven iron. Okay, here's what happens. When you get up to the top of your swing, your hands start here. If you get up to the top and your right hip stays out of the way and your hands come in here, now your hands are coming in shallower. That's what we want. Now the club is coming over the top of your hands from inside the target line. So you're definitely shallowing out your arms. Here's what I dislike about the club. If all of a sudden your arms are up here and you're concentrating on shallowing the club, well, yeah, the club's shallower, but your hands are moving way out away from you. So I want your arms to shallow. I want the club coming more from in here, giving you more space to run into the ball. We want this to happen. Then you're shallower, you get your long irons in the air, your fairway woods from here. But if you do it this way and the club gets too far behind you, yeah, you're shallower, but what are you gonna have to do? You've, you're stuck. You've lived this nightmare for a while. <laughs> so then you have to try to catch it up. So when it comes to shallowing the club, yeah, you want it coming in on a shallower angle into the ball, but how the club is working relative to your hands is important too, because if it's way behind your hands coming shallow, you're gonna to have to either try to square it up with your body or flip with your hands. Can you do that? Yeah, sure you can. You can do just about anything you wanna do, but it's pretty hard to do on a consistent basis. I tried it, didn't turn out to be the best part of my career. Next question. This is from Julius Zimmerman. Hi Mike, is there one move you could give us to stop coming over the top? Do you have a practice drill to shorten the backswing? Well, that's kind of two questions. But at the same time, both those questions are related dramatically. So, so if you were gonna show what is, see if you can show me what over the top is. You're such a good player, maybe you can't even do it. So they go back. Over the top. Oh. There you go, so there's over the top. So what really causes over the top is, go up to the top again. The first move down, when you start down, your right hip and your shoulder move out this way because you're trying to square the club face this way. 
So one of the best drills, start over, is to drop your right foot back, you swing up to the top, and now all you're gonna do is you're gonna leave your right foot on the ground so you can now run the club, now there's all that space. So now you're not twisting out, because if you twist out, your foot comes up. So any drill you can do, anything, that starts to get your right hip to move back and stay back, so it moves this way. I'll do it from this angle, because from here, you can't come over the top. Now I'm gonna give you one other thing here that's really big, and most people who come over the top do this, and most teachers don't even look at it. It's your eye line. Okay, your brain is a computer. It's trying to make the club swing parallel to where your eyes are. So go ahead and set up there, Margarita. So if she sets up here, and I take her eyes, and I turn her eyes this way, and I say, okay, now make a swing. Okay, from there, it's almost impossible for her to come over the top. So if I turn her eyes like this, so I'm exaggerating, go ahead and make a swing, nice, easy little swing. Okay, she's coming from the inside. There's not a chance she's gonna come over the top. Now, if I do this to her, if I take her eyes and I go this way, so I turn her eyes that way, and I say swing from the inside. See, she can't swing from the inside. So one of the easiest ways to fix the path of over the top is just turn your eyes a little out to the right and make swings, and your body will tend to follow your eye line. The next question was change the direction or length of swing. Okay, so I want you to swing the club right to here, right to shoulder height, so just swing it there and stop. Now hit it, try to go. Okay, here's how most people try to shorten their swing. So they say, well, I want my swing to be right here. So they swing to that spot and then they look at the ball and then they try to hit it from there. You, that'll absolutely ruin you. So what changes the length of your swing? It's the timing of the change of directions in your lower body. So. When I start the club back, the minute that the club starts moving this way, my right hip, as most tour players, my right hip is already starting to turn and move that way. So the sooner that I change directions, the shorter my swing's gonna be. Now, if I wait and wait and wait and wait before I start to change directions, my swing gets really long. So we're gonna make two swings. One, we're gonna, let you, we're gonna take you all the way to the top where you just go do, 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 do. You see how long her swing gets? We're gonna do that again. Go all the way and then hit it. Okay, so there's one. Grab another ball. Now this doesn't mean that you do this quick. Make a practice swing so you can feel it. So this time as she starts back, I'm gonna change directions with her hips a little sooner. So what happened to the length of her swing? You feel how much shorter it got? Oh yeah. Okay, so length of swing has to do with being able to sink out the movements of your body and the weight of the club for that to change the length of your swing. If you try to just swing shorter and hit it, uh, it's probably not gonna work, just a guess here. I mean, there's some that have tried. I spent hours swinging to a place and hit it, but then I tried to figure out if that's the place I want, what does the timing have to be in my body to make my hands actually stop there? So you don't stop it, the motions stop it. Next question. This is from Gabriel. Now I'm not even gonna try to even go after the other part of it because I'll screw it up terribly. But Gabriel says, Tommy Tomasello had this concept in the 90s. Watched his video hundreds of times. My son thought I was going mad. Well, I wasn't going mad. It was that I couldn't explain the feel you have explained so well. Thank you very much. Okay, this is a comment. There is nothing new in golf, nothing. I haven't come up with anything. What I've been able to do is kind of piece things together and find out a concept of how to bring it to somebody or bring it to people and let you see what I've learned. But there are people that have helped me along the way. Joe Nichols, back in the 70s, had this way before me, and he had it before that, who he worked with. There's been all kinds of teachers back in the turn of the century that almost anything you talk to me about now in golf, I can go back and find an article that was written in the 18, 1900s 
that relates to the same things. So what I always struggle with in our industry is when somebody says, here's what we've discovered or come up with. Well, maybe they've discovered it for them, but most of it is information that's been there. It just probably wasn't put together in the right sequences or the verbiage was off. So thank you very much for this. I, I, I remember the name, but I don't remember seeing those videos. And I'm sorry, I'll go look at them because I like to see everybody who's done whatever they've done because it just helps me to communicate better. Next question from Flying Diego. Mike, could you show us what the momentum of the club looks like swinging in front of you? Because I've done most from down the line. Uh, okay, Margarita. So if you're going to exaggerate this, if you were going to exaggerate it, here's what you want to try to feel with the club. So you swing up to the top. The handle comes down, the club works out, and it stays right in front of that. Now, there the club head is staying above your hands. That's a very, very good drill or feel because you want to feel like that the club is swinging level. So it goes up, the handle comes down, and the club stays right in sync with your, with your chest. Now go ahead and let the club brush the ground. Do the same thing, but let the club drop to the ground. So there's the exact same motion where the club as you start down, the club's working out in front of you. One, you're holding the club up, and one, you're letting the weight of the club unhinge your wrist to the ground, which is what we want to actually get to. You feel like you're swinging level, but gravity is taking the club down. The faster you swing, the more momentum, the harder the club goes down, so the less effort you need to make it go there. That's a good picture of what you're trying to do with that club in front of you. Hitting down is an effect and it's gravity. It's gonna do it whether you want it to or not. Okay, this next question comes from Ted Douglas. He says, thanks Mike, could you talk about starting the swing or takeaway sequence? All right, give me that orange grip. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, I'm gonna do it from this angle because it's gonna make more sense from here. All right, when you set up to the ball, first of all, most players have some kind of trigger that starts the club back. Uh, for a long time, years ago, all the players triggered their backswing by kicking their knee in. They had a forward press, and then they would recoil the club back. What's happened now with golf, because they don't want you to spend so much time getting yourself lined up correctly that they don't want you to kick yourself out of position to start the club back. Now, so now everybody has triggers. We're just talking about a trigger right now. Most of them, they get set up and then they'll have some kind of a little bounce. So, so they'll go boom and they'll go, or they take a deep breath, fill their diaphragm, blow the air out, and then they'll go. So it's not as much of the forward press and triggering things. As far as the actual sequence, when you set up, when you start the club back, what's starting it back? Well, if you get into the physiology of it, basically your abdominal muscles are starting to contract and your lower lumbar spine muscles, they're called your paraspinal muscles, and they start to move and rotate your spine. Now, a lot of people feel this left shoulder, okay, this lat muscle. They feel that push back. So that's pushing the club back. So it pushes back. So the club starts to swing back like this. So what are my hips doing? Well, in this part, they're not doing anything. So you can practice a full swing takeaway. You can stand there and practice it right here. Now, as the club goes back further, all of a sudden now, my shoulders start to turn. And then as my shoulders start to turn, <clears throat> they get to a point where they can't go any further. So then what has, starts to happen? Well, then my hips start to turn. So that's kind of the sequence, is the club head goes, then your hands and arms go, then your shoulders go, then your hips go. Most people start the club back with their shoulders or their hips, which then it takes the club out of priority and it gets them all out of sync. So if you can feel, get the club going first. Now those old guys that used to kick in, when they would start back, when they would go back, they would trigger the club to swing back. And when they kicked in, when they would start back, hardly any of them would turn this way too soon. So actually what they did wasn't too, wasn't too bad. It actually stopped, I think, more problems than it created. 
It got their feet working so they weren't static. As they, started the, as, they, as they kicked in and started back, they weren't getting twisted out of the way, so the club would swing back on a much better arc. They were a lot more into the weight and momentum of the club head 30, 40, 50 years ago and back even further than they are now. So I hope that helps you with sequence. Uh, again, it's the club starts, then the shaft, then your hands, arms, shoulders, hips. And what's interesting is the downswing is your hips are already starting to go. And then that starts your shoulders, which starts your arms, which brings the club down. So it's a one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. It's kind of that kind of back and forth hand. That's what they call sequence or they call it kinematic sequence or whatever. So it's the reverse action of the backswing. Thank you. You can just stand there on this one. This one, we don't need to do anything. <laughs> I'm the star, by the way. <laughs>